I'm getting into freestyle soon as a hobby. Is the GEPRC Mark V HD a good option? Yes. I mean, the no one should fly a five-inch FPV drone uh, as their first flight. No one should learn on a five-inch freestyle drone. You should start in the simulator. I've got a series of lessons. Um, learn to fly an FPV drone for total beginners. Uh, oh, that's, yeah. Learn to fly an FPV drone today for total beginners. This is my current playlist. It's up to 20 lessons. You should get your simulator and you should work your way through this playlist. You don't have to do all 20 lessons. You can, you don't have to. Um, but um, do, do like the first 10 lessons for sure. And get proficient because if you try to fly a five inch freestyle drone without practice, you will destroy it. You will crash it. You'll lose it. You're wasting your money. Once you get reasonably like like capable in the simulator, then you could go try to fly the real thing and the five inch, the Gepro C Mark V is a fine choice. Prosbeek Zillard. Thank you for uh, 25. R-O-N, is that Romania? I'm guessing. I could look it up, but I won't. I'm getting back into the five inch FPV game. What is considered today as a good bang for your buck motor? I prefer more resolution over top end. Um, I want to uh, address the misconception that different motor designs have more resolution. That is, in my opinion, uh, a, a complete myth. Uh, like, ooh, does a 2306 have more resolution than a 2207? It's a myth. Um, generally, the only thing that is going to really make you feel resolution is KV. A higher KV motor will achieve more RPMs. Therefore, over the throttle range, you will have 0 to 30,000 RPMs instead of 0 to 25,000 RPMs. And because there are more RPMs in the throttle range, you'll get less resolution. Uh, but uh, if you want more resolution and quote-unquote linearity, which is also a myth, uh, get a lower KV motor. But you'll have less top-end power, so that's a, that's a decision you need to make. Good bang for your buck motor, uh, Zing E Pro, Zingy e Pro, T Motor Velox, or Emax Eco are all good choices. Any tips on increasing flight time without a bigger battery? Andy asks. Andy, the, uh, the flip side of that is lighter weight, cut weight. Um, uh, the, uh, the bigger battery, lighter weight, larger props. Now, larger props probably aren't an option because of the frame you're using, So, but I wanted to throw that in. Those are the three main things that will increase flight time without changing your battery. Do solder joints get oxidized to a point they start interfering with battery sag, getting bad flight times in my oldest drones, even with new LiPos? Uh, thank you for five ray eyes, Mark One. No, I, I mean, I don't think so. No. Um, I would think there are many other reasons why old drones, like the motors are wearing out or something. Like, I wouldn't think oxidized solder joints. Not that a bad solder joint can't do that, but I don't think that's very likely. Jonathan Allen is having trouble with his HD0 USB programmer. Uh, Jonathan, um, I have found that the, the wires on the HD0 programmer are very small and fragile. And, like, if you flash, I've found that if you're not really careful pulling it out and plugging it back in and so forth, it's easy to break those wires or damage the connector. So that's my guess as to what's going on. The question is, um, I have a brand new SpeedyB F405 V4 ESC. Got the quad all set up and the motor's spinning. I did a test hover and everything seemed fine. I changed the battery, went out to fly, and the ESC kept rebooting and it would not take off. Uh, uh, either it's losing power or you have a bad ESC. I mean, there's no, there's no two ways about it. It's not like something's broken, you need to fix it. Either you're like your XT60 is loose and you're losing power, but then you would also lose video, right? So if you've kept video the whole time, yeah, you have a bad ESC. That sucks. But that's like, I don't know what, what conclusion you could come to other than that. 
Will I be lame if I fly anything other than acro with my first Cinewhoop? Thank you for a $10 super chat, Walter Hartman. Walter, at the end of the day, the footage you create is what matters. If you and the customer, whoever they, or, or just you, are happy with the footage, that's all that matters. But you will objectively create worse footage in, ac in angle mode than acro mode. And if you really want to be the best possible pilot, you certainly should fly in acro mode. It doesn't make you lame. I would never call you that. You're having fun. You're doing your thing. But uh, if you start in angle mode, you should use the simulator to learn acro mode as as quickly as you can because you'll just be a much better pilot as a result and you'll get better results. Brian Kirk says, my battery cable got in the way of the props. I assume it got chopped. What's the best way to keep that from happening going forward? Um... Like, you need to secure it and route it in a way that it won't get chopped. The exact way to do that depends on the exact nature of your build. Um, so, like, where does the cable come out of the frame? And then what you have to do is you have to mount the battery. And then what I'll usually do is I'll route the battery strap, through, or the, batter, the XT60 lead, through the battery strap so the battery straps hold it down. Um, that's my approach. You need to route, route the cable in such a way that it is re restrained, usually by the battery straps. So. Gross J83, thank you for a $5 super chat, asks, what keyboard do I have? Um, my keyboard is, I get this question every so often. Should get a sponsorship. My keyboard is the Ducky One, uh, the 104 key version. Okay, what's going on here, Ducky? Your website is crap. I just want to. Oh my god. I can't believe. So here we are, Ducky. Oh, we loaded in. There we go. Ducky. The one, Ducky one, search. Oh, this website is so overwrought. Can I just search for one? Oh, we gotta wait for five more minutes. The Ducky one, three, no, it's not RGB. What the hell? That's not a mini. Oh, what a world. One, two, pro RGB, one, three, yellow Ducky. 1-3 TKL. Yeah, so it's something like this. Where's just the regular old Ducky 1? Does it not even exist anymore? I guess I searched for 1. one I don't want RGB. Ooh, this one's nice. 1-2 one, Midnight. So I guess they, they've gone to the second generation of the 1. A single backlight might be okay. Ooh, side print. Nice. So I, I'm a big, I think it's a great keyboard. I mean, mechanical keyboards are, you know, a uh, personal thing, and there's lots of them out there. Mine has the brown switches. I tried a million, uh, like five or six different switches, including, like I tried this key, the key switch sampler. And I, I, did, I didn't find it definitive. I needed to actually type on a keyboard. So I bought like four different Ducky keyboards and returned them one by one as I didn't like the key switches. And I finally settled on the Browns uh, because, and I'm so, the Browns are like the most boring, uh, middle of the road, vanilla, uh, mechanical key switch and I didn't want to be a guy who had browns I wanted blues but blues are I love blues but they're so loud especially when you're streaming it drives people crazy so I couldn't keep my I had a blues keyboard for a while and the streamer it was no good so um, I ended up getting browns and here we are it's a good keyboard I like it. Got some custom key, key caps on there. 
recently uh, had a friend send me some custom keycaps. So now I have cool colors in addition to uh, my keyboard. 